Okay, so I have some bad news. It sounds like the Flight 5 might actually be in November, and SpaceX is speaking publicly about this. This is kind of BS. Previously, the FAA had communicated mid-September. Starship has been ready to fly since August, and now the FAA has given a more than two-month delay to the previously communicated date with an estimate of late November for a launch license. What the heck? Let's get into it. Well, I'm barely alive after covering the Polaris Dawn launch, but yet again, we have some breaking space news. In my Gmail inbox this morning, I had an email from the public affairs specialist with the FAA, as well as a news brief from SpaceX's media department, and... Yeah, there's kind of some drama going on right now. It appears that SpaceX is going on the offensive. As we know, their process of rapid iteration means that they need to fly as much as possible to learn so that they can improve the process and have better performance. But they have a hang up and it doesn't actually have to do with Starship. It has to do with the FAA. No surprise there for many of you. But let's read what SpaceX has to say and then what the FAA also announced today. So SpaceX emailed this to me, but also publicly put it on their website. Starships are meant to fly. It is a pretty long article with some main points. And you know what? I'll just read it to you because some of you guys like audiobooks, so pretend that I'm a professional narrator in an audiobook. SpaceX was founded in 2002 to expand access to outer space, not just for government or traditional satellite operators, but for new participants around the globe. Today, we're flying at an unprecedented pace as the world's most active launch services provider. SpaceX is safely and reliably launching astronauts, satellites, and other payloads on missions benefiting life on Earth and preparing humanity for our ultimate goal to explore other planets in our solar system and beyond. Starship is paramount to making that sci-fi future, along with a growing number of U.S. national priorities, a reality. It is the largest and most powerful powerful space transportation system ever developed, and its fully and rapidly reusable design will exponentially increase humanity's ability to access and utilize outer space. Full reusability has been an elusive goal throughout the history of spaceflight, piling innumerable technical challenges on what is already the most difficult engineering pursuit in human existence. It is rocket science on ludicrous mode. Every flight of Starship has made tremendous progress and accomplished increasingly difficult test objectives, making the entire system more capable and more reliable. Our approach of putting flight hardware in the flight environment as often as possible maximizes the pace at which we can learn recursively and operationalize the system. This is the same approach that unlocked reuse on our Falcon fleet of rockets and made SpaceX the leading launch provider in the world today. To do this and to do it rapidly enough to meet commitments to national priorities like NASA's Artemis program, starships need to fly. The more we fly safely, the faster we learn. The faster we learn, the sooner we realize full and rapid rocket reuse. Unfortunately, we continue to be stuck in a reality where it takes longer to do the government paperwork to license a rocket launch than it does to design and build the actual hardware. This should never happen and directly threatens America's position as the leader in space. Flight 5. The Starship and Super Heavy vehicles for Flight 5 have been ready to launch since the first week of August. The flight tests will include our most ambitious objective yet, attempt to return the Super Heavy booster to the launch site and catch it in mid-air. This will be a singularly novel operation in the history of rocketry. SpaceX engineers have spent years preparing and months testing for the booster catch attempt, with technicians pouring tens of thousands of hours into building the infrastructure to maximize our chances for success. Every test comes with risk, especially those seeking to do something for the first time. SpaceX goes to the maximum extent possible on every flight to ensure that while we are accepting risk to our own hardware, we accept no compromises when it comes to ensuring public safety. It's understandable that such a unique operation would require additional time to analyze from a licensing perspective. Unfortunately, instead of focusing resources on critical safety analysis and collaborating on rational safeguards to protect both the public and the environment, 
the licensing process has been repeatedly derailed by issues ranging from the frivolous to patently absurd. At times, these roadblocks have been driven by false and misleading reporting built on bad faith hysterics from online detractors or special interest groups who have presented poorly constructed science as fact. We recently received a launch license date estimate of late November from the FAA, the government agency responsible for licensing Starship flight tests. This is a more than two-month delay to the previously communicated date of mid-September. This delay was not based on a new safety concern, but instead driven by the superfluous environmental analysis. The four open environmental issues are illustrative of the difficulties launch companies face in the current regulatory environment for launch and re-entry licensing. Steel and water. Starship's water-cooled steel flame deflector has been the target of false reporting, wrongly alleging that it pollutes the environment or has operated completely independent of regulation. This narrative omits fundamental facts that have either been ignored or intentionally misinterpreted. At no time did SpaceX operate the deflector without a permit. SpaceX was operating in good faith under a multi-sector general permit to cover deluge operations under the supervision of the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality. SpaceX worked closely with TCEQ to incorporate numerous mitigation measures prior to its use, including the installation of retention basins, construction of protective curbing, plugging of outfalls during operations, and use of only drinking water that does not come into contact with any industrial processes. A permit number was assigned and made active in July 2023. TCEQ officials were physically present at the first testing of the deluge system and given the opportunity to observe operations around launch. The water-cooled steel flame deflector does not spray pollutants into the surrounding environment. Again, it uses literal drinking water. Outflow water has been sampled after every use of the system and consistently shows negligible traces of any contaminants and specifically that all levels have remained below standards for all state permits that would authorize discharge. TCEQ, the FAA, and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service evaluated the use of the system prior to its initial use and during tests and launch and determined it would not cause environmental harm. When the EPA issued its administrative order in March 2024, it was done before seeking a basic understanding of the facts of the water-cooled steel flame deflectors operation or acknowledgement that we were operating under the Texas Multi-Sector General Permit. After meeting with the EPA, during which the EPA stated their intent Intent was not to stop testing preparation or launch operations, it was decided that SpaceX should apply for an individual discharge permit. Despite our previous permitting, which was done in coordination with TCEQ, and our operation having little to nothing in common with industrial waste discharges covered by individual permits, we applied for an individual permit in July 2024. The subsequent fines levied on SpaceX by TCEQ and the EPA are entirely tied to disagreements over paperwork. We chose to settle so we can focus our energy on completing the missions and commitments that we have made to the U.S. government, commercial customers, and ourselves. Paying fines is extremely disappointing when we fundamentally disagree with the allegations, and we are supported by the fact that the EPA has agreed that nothing about the operation of our flame deflector will need to change, only the name of the permit has changed. Good steward, no launch site operates in a vacuum. As we have built up capacity to launch and develop new sites across the country, we have always been committed to public safety and mitigating impacts to the environment. At Starbase, we implement an extensive list of mitigations developed with federal and state agencies, many of which require year-round monitoring and frequent updates to regulators and consultation with independent biological experts. The list of measures we take for operations in Texas is over 200 items long, including constant monitoring and sampling of the short and long-term health of local flora and fauna. The narrative that we operate free of or in defiance of environmental regulation is demonstrably false. Environmental regulations and mitigations serve a noble purpose stemming from common sense safeguards to enable progress while preventing undue impact to the environment. However, with the licensing process being drawn out for Flight 5, we find ourselves delayed for unreasonable and exasperating reasons. Oh my God, this is so long. Okay. 
back into character. On Starship's fourth flight, the top of the super heavy booster, commonly known as the hot stage, was jettisoned to splash down on its own in the Gulf of Mexico. The hot stage plays an important part in protecting the booster during separation from Starship's upper stage before detaching during the booster's return flight. This operation was analyzed thoroughly ahead of Starship's fourth flight, specifically focused on any potential impact to protected marine species. Given the distribution of marine animals in this specific landing area and comparatively small size of the hot stage, the probability of a direct impact is essentially zero. This is something previously determined as standard practice by the FAA and the National Marine Fisheries Service for the launch industry at large, which disposes of rocket stages and other hardware in the ocean on every single launch, except of course for our own Falcon rockets, which land and are reused. The only proposed modification for Starship ship's fifth flight is a marginal change in the splashdown location of the hot stage, which produces no increase in likelihood for impacting marine life. Despite this, the FAA leadership approved a 60-day consultation with the National Marine Fisheries Service. Furthermore, the mechanics of these types of consultations outline that any new questions raised during that time can reset the 60-day counter over and over again. This single issue, which was already exhaustively analyzed, could indefinitely delay launch without addressing any plausible impact to the environment. Okay, side note, this is starting to piss me off. This is ridiculous. I think SpaceX is making their case very well. Okay, back into character. Another unique aspect to Starship's fifth flight and a future return and catch of the Super Heavy booster will be the audible sonic booms in the area around the return location. As we previously noted, the general impact to those in the surrounding area of a sonic boom is the brief thunder-like noise. The FAA, in consultation with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, evaluated sonic booms from the landing of the Super Heavy and found no significant impacts to the environment. Although animals exposed to the sonic booms may be brief startled, numerous prior studies have shown sonic booms of varying intensity have no detrimental effect on wildlife. Despite this documented evidence, the FAA leadership approved an additional 60-day consultation with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife as a slightly larger area could experience a sonic boom. Lastly, the area around Starbase is well known as being host to various protected birds. SpaceX already has extensive mitigations in place and has been conducting biological monitoring for birds near Starbase for nearly 10 years. The protocol for monitoring was developed with U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and is conducted by professional, qualified, independent biologists. To date, the monitoring has not shown any population-level impacts to the monitored bird populations, despite unsubstantiated claims to the contrary that the authors themselves later amended. Even though Starship's fifth flight will take place outside of nesting season, SpaceX is still implementing additional mitigations and monitoring to minimize impacts to wildlife, including infrared drone surveillance pre- and post-launch to track nesting presence. We're also working with experts to assess deploying special protection measures prior to launches during bird nesting season. Okay, don't worry, we're almost done. SpaceX is committed to minimizing impact and enhancing the surrounding environment where possible. One of our proudest partnerships in South Texas is with Sea Turtle Inc., a local nonprofit dedicated to sea turtle conservation. SpaceX assists with finding and transporting injured sea turtles to their facilities for treatment. SpaceX has also officially adopted Boca Chica Beach through the Texas General Lands Office Adopt a Beach program with the responsibility of picking up litter and promoting a litter free environment. SpaceX sponsors and participates in quarterly beach cleanups as well as quarterly State Highway 4 cleanups. SpaceX has removed hundreds of pounds of trash from the beach in State Highway 4 over the last several years. SpaceX also fosters environmental education at the local level by hosting school tours as well as an annual environmental education day with Texas Parks and Wildlife, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, National Park Service, and Sea Turtle Inc. And finally, to fly. Despite a small but vocal minority of detractors trying to game the regulatory system to obstruct and delay the development of Starship, 
SpaceX remains committed to the mission at hand. Our thousands of employees work tirelessly because they believe that unlimited opportunities and tangible benefits for life on Earth are within reach if humanity can fundamentally advance its ability to access space. This is why we're committed to continually pushing the boundaries of spaceflight with a relentless focus on safety and reliability. Holy moly, uh, I used to be a TV news anchor, but boy, that was a lot of reading and I'm not done. Okay. Okay, so SpaceX makes a very, very good case, in my opinion. Let's read what the FAA had to say. And don't worry, the FAA's message is much shorter. So an FAA Associate Administrator for Commercial Space Transportation, Kelvin B. Coleman, testified before the House Science Committee today, Tuesday, September 10th, to discuss safe commercial space transportation and the agency's ongoing efforts to streamline and improve our regulatory framework and processes. And listen to these few excerpts from the written testimony. We understand the importance of making timely licensing and permitting determinations and continue to make it our priority. Over the last 11 years, we have issued 49 license determinations, averaging 151 days to issue a new license. Note the FAA is required by statute to make licensing determination within 180 days from license application acceptance. We have taken action to improve our internal efficiency, which includes bolstering our staffing to handle licensing, permitting, and inspections, improved communication with industry that is clear, concise, specific, and actionable, wider availability through office hours and workshops, and investments in the development of new tools that will improve license application and processing efficiency. We have also highlighted to industry a number of steps they can take to speed up license and permit determinations. We continue to encourage operators to ensure their licensing applications speak directly to our requirements at the outset with clear narratives that spell out their safety case exactly how their methodologies support the means of compliance. Additionally, it is important that operators minimize amendments and go-backs after their application review has started. When a quality application is provided by an applicant at the start, a more expeditious approval is possible. By March 10, 2026, all launch and re-entry licenses issued by the FAA under legacy regulations will no longer be valid, and launch and re-entry vehicle operators must be in compliance with Part 450. We are encouraging industry to apply under Part 450 as soon as possible. So interesting um, points made here and also by SpaceX. The FAA is basically saying that uh, it's on the industry to to take the steps needed to speed up license and permit determinations. But if we go back to SpaceX's statement, it sounds like additional 60-day consultations are very easily issued. After reading both of these, um, it really sounds like SpaceX is being unfairly targeted and punished. So we finally have an answer, right? The FAA has delayed the SpaceX Starship launch license. It was supposed to be in mid-September. Here we are. And now it looks like it's going to be in November at the earliest. So SpaceX is going public with this, which I'm sure all of us appreciate as we're trying to make plans to see Flight 5. But uh, if we zoom out, this is a big issue. We need Starship to fly as much as possible. You know, this whole idea that Starship is ready to go and the paperwork is what is taking so long with some false claims mixed in there. Uh, this is this is a pretty big deal. We might be worried about China beating us out if we go at this slow of a pace, and this is not a slow pace on behalf of SpaceX. SpaceX, I think, makes a very compelling case. They've outlined what they're doing to take those steps, and uh, I, man, this is, um, I'm I'm still half asleep from covering the Polaris Dawn launch, but this is a big deal, and so I want to know what you guys think in the comments. Are you worried about this threatening the Starship program? threatening our progress going to Mars, our progress even going back to the moon. I am a bit concerned here. It sounds like the FAA uh, really feels justified that they are standing their ground, that it's really on the, you know, industry, that they're they're not working hard enough or doing the right things. Something fishy is going on here. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Uh, the space news just keeps on coming Thursday, September 12th. We're going to have the Polaris Dawn spacewalk. And on Friday, we're finally going to hear from Butch and Sunny for the first time since July. So I'll be live streaming that. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.